Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Once again, welcome back to Plot. It's, uh, it's a lovely afternoon here. Saturday afternoon, what? We're off, focused for some heavy winds again tonight. And uh, some more heavy rains, so I'm going to plot on this afternoon. First thing I've got to do is say, uh, must apologise for the um, for the boom I've made last week. Uh, of course, uh, a few of the early viewers have pointed out that there was loads of adverts on. Of course, once again, it's my fault. I hadn't checked my default settings, and of course, YouTube just crammed it full of uh, adverts. So the first thing I had to do was to, once I'd noticed the mistake was to go upstairs, uh, Take the uh, take the film off altogether, take the video off altogether, and reload it. And of course, went back and checked my default settings, and they were open. And of course, whenever YouTube gets a chance just to cram it full of um, of adverts, they will do it. But uh, as I say, I went back to my default settings, and uh, just put a, um, what I normally have is a uh, is an advert at the front and an advert at the back, uh, and that's it. Quite happy with that. No more. Anyway, uh, as I say, I must, uh, must apologise for that for them early viewers. Um, and just thanks for letting us know early on what the problem was. Uh, this afternoon, a bit disappointed up here in the uh, in the large polytunnel. Um, what I had done last week, uh, the sweet corns are absolutely marvellous. They're the wrong way, I'm over the moon there. But uh, what I had planted out last week uh, was the first stage of getting the, uh, the Three Sister Challenge done. I plant the melons out and of course we got all that heavy rain, heavy wind, cold, wet rain and it was seeping through the roof and of course I've got some debris netting over the top here because I've got a, a big split right along the tunnel which I can't afford to, to repair until the end of this year. Um, it's pointless stripping everything off now because it's full of plants and that but of course with the cold wet rain seeping through, dripping down and of course it just soaking the melons so I've lost the uh, six, six melons here. There's a one over in that far corner, uh, a night, night gear to pick up. I'm just keeping an eye on them. I've, lo I've lost six, but what I am going to do is, in this corner here, um, I sowed three um, crystal lemon uh, cucumbers, so I'm just going to let them trail along the ground. And they'll do exactly the same job as what the melons are going to do. It's just that we're going to be a little short of melons this year, but, you know, it's winners and losers. Uh, everything else in here is going away fantastic. And, of course... I've lifted and I've lifted the poly off the off the net so it's wide open. And of course, when we're getting that there, we'll get that westerlies, the cold wind, that finish off the melons all together. They uh, they like it nice and warm and uh, moist. But of course, cold wet rain dripping on top of them. Same with any cucumber, uh, any melon squashes, anything like that. Here, wet, too wet, too wet conditions, and especially if it's on top of them, it'll you know, just kill them off all together. But uh, apart from that, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pleased with the way the corn's growing. What we did doing here, me and Roger at the beginning of the week, we, we're, uh, we took out the last of the um, the potatoes. We'll go in the uh, in the big hundred foot greenhouse in a minute because I'm I'm attempting to sow some some uh, last minute beans because we've got potatoes out of there. I've got a few tomatoes in that place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a row of uh, dwarf French beans down the front because there's a bit of land spare there, and I hate wasting land. This is at the end of this year, once it's all cleared off, we'll fill up our cabbage. The cabbage will clear the soil for us for next year for a, a crop of uh, whatever I want to put in there. I may put the sweet corns in there next year just for a change and uh, change the soil around. But um, if you remember sowing the beans about three weeks ago, I use a uh, mixed variety. Of course, there they are. Strong as, uh, strong as anything. And uh, it's a matter of now of just. Uh, Lifting them out of the trees, just make sure any weeds off them. Gorgeous, strong little plants, eh? nice little root systems. And what I like to do is just um, go down the side of the corn and just drop a bean in. And there we have it. And you can see the different varieties. That's the black bean, the long bean, and this is the light ones. So I tend to just like to mix them up. This soil is absolutely beautiful. Um, when we took the potatoes out here, out Roger, I had brought some few bags of, of pony muck from the stables, just solid muck, and I just hide them in here, and uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's lovely and soft, and of course with the weepy hoses now, as I mentioned in the last video, I'll put the weepy hose in there at the 100 foot greenhouse now, and we can just set that away, and come up at night time, set it away, and let it drip all night, and uh, 
two big tunnels and a big greenhouse, all watered all in one go. But there, uh, that's the idea of that anyway. As I say, the lovely strong little beans, fantastic little plants. And uh, there, that's, that's only been there. Uh, it's only been two weeks, just over two weeks now, and absolutely fantastic. Now, what's the size I like them? The cones are up to two foot now, nice and strong, that's grown away well. All these need is a good weeding out every other day. The melons would have been in last week, and of course, the beans in this week. Now, what will happen is the beans will get away, I'll get them a good watering in, the beans will get itself away. And I'll start climbing up these plants. Now what I might do next week, I might just put a little tyre around the sweet cones. But there, uh, up to now, they're looking absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm over the moon with them. We'll finish them off tomorrow. We'll get there for this afternoon. I'll get a few more of them put in. I'll just pop them up there for the time being. Just about finished this last bench. Let's see, I've got the beans here. I've got a couple of trees of bedding plants here. Some begonias. I've got a few croissants. And I've got a couple of dahlias sitting on the end of the top there which I've still got to take a few cuttings off but one thing at a time it's, uh, it's been a uh, it's been a trial these last couple of weeks trying to get there trying to get every job done we're uh, we've all finished planting out outside in fact I'm starting to dig up now as you can if you you see my Facebook page through the weekend last week I started taking the garlics up uh, now what the say is when I had that heavy rate I leave the onions in because um they're getting a really good soaking. I'm just keeping an eye on them to make sure they don't start rotting. Uh, but I will be taking them up probably next week. Um, and I'll show you the cabbages when we go through into the, uh, into the big greenhouse. Because I only planted them last week and in last week's video. And already they're popping through. So what I want to do today is uh, give them a good spraying of chamomile tea. Don't forget. Always spray the seed when I plant them. And then once it breaks surface I give them another good soaking of chamomile tea. And that keeps them nice and strong. Let's say... Uh, Antibiactal properties in the uh, chamomile tea, it gives them, keeps them nice and clean and it just keeps any um, any fungi, diseases, anything like that out of them. It keeps them nice and clean, stops them dampening off and then in a week's time we'll probably pop them off into our little cups, give them another four and eight in our cups, put them outside in the bench to harden off and then they'll be ready for planting out about the first week in July. Strong little plants, lovely, and that'll fill the gaps up where the garlics come out and the jack onions will come out. But uh, I'll get these finished later on, get, this sweet, get these all planted out. Uh, and as I say, I've got, uh, I've got three uh, crystal lemon apple there. I'll let them trail right through the beds. And at the other side here, I've got the summer holiday um, courgettes. So once again, they, they'll do the same thing. I'll let the courgettes trail through here, and I'll let the cucumbers come the other way. So I'm still going to have the beds covered with leaves. And that's the whole idea. Um, keep them nice and cool. And whip your hoses down. Once I start climbing along here and give a bit of shade, it'll keep the soil nice and moist. And uh, as I say, the beans will start growing up the sweet corn. The sweet corn will get fed off the beans because the beans will give nitrogen from the roots. That'll feed the sweet corn. And of course, it gives the beans something to climb up. And hopefully, you'll get a first class crop of cobs like we do uh, most years. But they're uh, really pleased with them, looking really strong and healthy. Uh, we have planted some outside, I hope there's an outside, because uh, Roger likes to put a few out in, in the back borders there. But um, up to now, Touchwood are growing away really well. They're getting plenty of fresh air, they're getting plenty of water when they need it, and uh, that's where we grow our cobs. Hopefully we'll get some, hopefully we'll get some cracking crops off there. But uh, let's pop in there, on the foot greenhouse, and uh, I've got them beans to sow, and then of course we've got the uh, strawberries to start on. Okay? Right, well, here we are. I've got uh, a few of the tomatoes that we had left over. Um, what we managed to do was stick them in the ring culture pots, and uh, of course, the ring culture, ring culture pots are just sitting on top of the bed there. There's a little bit of pony muck being scattered around the top there. We took the last of the, um, the Winston potatoes out of here, and they're absolutely marvellous. I've got, uh, I've got two or three trays down the bottom there, and uh, absolutely fantastic crop. But what I've done down here, um, well, we took the last of the rows out. There's a bit of spare land here, so I'm not going to waste it. And what I want to do is just put a, a row of um, dwarf French beans in, and I'll just uh, use the land up because, as I say, at the end of this year, what we'll be doing 
as we'll be putting the, some cabbages in. We've not had cabbages in here for a couple of years. And uh, in any of my greenhouses, what I like to do, I'm just going to push some water down that. I like doing that furrow first. I put this furrow in this morning when we were first thing this morning, me and Roger. I put the furrow in and I put a couple of good canfuls of water in because it was really dry. And as I say, when we dug the titties out, there was very little moisture in this. Uh, and I think that's how the titties come out really clean. But uh, since then, we've had the, the weepy hoses. Um, we've connected them all up, so we've now got three coming from the top. And uh, it reduces the water flow a little bit, but uh, that's the whole idea of a weepy hose. It just drips out slowly, and it'll soak in the beds, and it makes them cool. And of course, that's the idea of it in here. And that's the part about the front part here. I can just go down with a can of water. When the beans start coming through and what these, but over there amongst the tomatoes, it's uh, it's great. The wheat hose in amongst there and it just drips away. As I say, I can come up for the night and put it on the night and let it run all night. And the, the two big polytunnels and the, the large greenhouse here will just be drip, drip, drip all night long and uh, keep it nice and keep it nice and moist. Really soaking the bed, but not over watering it. So I'm just going to whip along here. I'm soaking the trench. And of course, I've got the dwarf French bean Sprite, which is uh, a nice early cropper. What I have done in, pa in years past, uh, which you can do, is when you take your, take your strawberries down from your baskets, is to put uh, some dwarf beans in baskets. And they grow quite well. Um, I've done it a couple of years running. Actually, I might have enough in there for another row, so I'll uh, I'm going to start to send here and just drop a few in. I'm not really bothered about spacing, um, it's going to be a bit haphazard because as I say, they're going to grow really well in here, it's nice fertile soil, it's warm, and uh, if need be, if need be, we can pour a little bit of a uh, couple of sticks up with a couple of ropes in, and a couple of strings tied down just to give them a little bit of support, but I don't think they'll need much. Yeah. As I say, they only grow up about 8 and 9 inches. I'm just using this packet up. As I say, there's still quite a few in there, so I might, uh, I might save a few more for a, a half a row. And that's right, Dr. Leaks here. And of course, I've got me, me show leaks I brought them in last, uh, last week, and I've got a pot in them now, so hopefully I'll get it. Heads of seed off them for next year. Uh, haven't been really bothered about leaks this year. As I say, a lot of the shows are cancelled, so uh, just a job of going down, follow the line down, follow the trench down, and just giving them a, give their beans a light covering. And as I say, they'll, they'll grow really well here, yeah, really fast. Probably be popping through here uh, in a week's time. Of course, we'll get a, we should get a good crop of beans off them before the weather turns cold. Uh, it is midsummer. It is the solstice. So once again, we're halfway through the year, and it feels as though we've only just started this year. Of course, we're one thing and another. The virus going on and on, and lockdown. It's been pretty challenging. But um, no doubt we'll get through it. Now what I'll do with that, I'll go down with another can full of water, give it a good soaking, and that's used up a little bit of land. As I said, tomatoes, cut a row of tomatoes at the back there. Yeah? Once this is all cleared, at the end of the year, we'll give it a good turnover, a really good liming because there've been potatoes in here. We'll uh, we'll put the probe in first because I didn't any, I didn't check this for numbers this year. So what I will do once the tomatoes come out. The beans are finished, we'll give it a good turnover, I'll put the probe in, find out what it's feeding, bring it up to scratch with lime, really good liming, and maybe a couple of handfuls of bone meal, and that's all this trench will get. It's been mucked now, so we'll get no more, and what we'll do, we'll fill it with spring cabbage, and the spring cabbage will grow, and grow a nice cabbage for next spring, and of course that will clear the soil of all our excess chemicals. And that's a way of cleaning your beds without having to soak them or leach them like a lot of people do 
and to get all the excess salts out of the flood the beds. I never have to do that. Just follow them with cabbage, a good spring cabbage. Like say Duncan, Durham early, something like that. I can use a ball head once, man. The ball head tapes grow really big, so in a small space, you're far better using the, the Durham early or the Duncan's. Nice little ones. Um, nice pointy cabbage. We'll get four rows in here, fill the whole bed up, and it'll clear the whole bed, and then next year we can start from fresh. And what I'll probably do next year, um, once the spring cabbage out, I'll bring a sweet corn into here. We've got enough headroom. Uh, I'll use some dwarf varieties, some smaller varieties. I'll probably fill this bed with sweet corn and a couple of cucumbers. But once again, we're changing crops year in, year out. Never, never have the same crop in twice, and that keeps the soil nice and clean. Uh, but that's, um, as I say, that's just finishing off that little bit of land, using that little bit of room up. And uh, I'll get myself some water, give this a good soaking, and then uh, that's another crop in. I have been cropping the beans outside, the peas outside that was sowed in the autumn. And uh, we've got some, uh, some quite nice um, crops out of them, and nearly finished, so we'll have them pulled out. And no doubt we'll find some uh, some small terms or something to go in their place, but we'll do that in the next video. Okay, right, well, to conclude the last part of this video this week, I've had a few requests of... Uh, of course the strawberries, we'll be starting for strawberries soon, we've had a decent enough crop, not as good as years gone by, because I was a bit disappointed in the strawberries that I had sent away for. Um, there's some quite nice fruits coming on, but nowhere near as, as good as we're all like. So what I'm starting to do is to take runners off them, and uh, bear in mind they were, they were bare rooted plants when I got them last year, so I wasn't that impressed with them. They could have been lifted a little bit too early out of the ground. Because uh, they're grown on farms uh, from the continent, and uh, I think they've been lifted a little bit too early. They didn't have the cold spell to put, give them that check, and uh, put them in a dormancy. And I think they've been lifted a little bit too early. But when I got them, they were long bare root plants. The first thing I did was cut away most of the roots and planted them, but uh, they were just so slow and picking up and getting a, getting a really good hold, even though they were in a cool greenhouse down at the bottom. But uh, I'm hoping. By taking the cuttings and grow them on the way I'll do, uh, we'll have nice, strong, really good looking plants for planting out in the autumn into the baskets, ready for taking inside in January, and hopefully that way we'll get a first class crop next year, the way I like to grow the strawberries. But uh, this, is, uh, this is my method. Uh, as I say, a couple of lads commented on the post of um, how I get me cuttings from the strawberries that are, that are in baskets. Well, the simple reason is to take a basket down. And now this has been clear of all the fruits, it's had a good weed now, and just a small pot, you can uh, set it in the pot, and put it on the bench, or what I like to do, is to get a tray, this is, this is one of my drip trays that I like using, and of course, it's always best if you take the chains off altogether. And, uh, I've just taken this basket out from where it's been, sitting on the bench over there, in the coolness, and uh, there we have it. What I like to do is to is to work out where they work out where they are, because you'll, you, you'll normally you'll find they're all bundled up and tied up and twisted. Now I like to take out, space them out. There's one from the other side there, so they're nice, nice and even. Put that over there. He can go to there. He can go to there there and there. Now normally I like to take about six cuttings from each plant, but with it's been so short of cuttings this year I'm going to take eight. Once again, the idea of the drip tray, I can put water into the drip tray and it's going to water from down below. The first initial watering I'll probably water up over the top, but anything after that will get water from down below. It's my own compost again, multi-purpose compost, but once again Plenty of sharp sand with it. I like it really free draining, so I want these runners to really get rooted in here as quick as they can. And then from there, they'll get moved up to a 9 centimetre pot, but we'll take you all through that in the later stages. First job now is to get these rooted. Um, good quality compost and plenty of sharp sand. And then it's just an easy enough job 
just getting small pins. You can use um, what I'm using are plastic straws, plastic straws, just cut in half, fold them, and you can use them just to pin them down. I've got little wear clips, hair pins, anything that'll do the job. And uh, and of course then it's just an easy job of getting a hold of your, your cutting. Now that's just spot on for that first pot here. Press them down, right at the bottom, so it's well anchored, he's well anchored into the soil there. I'll leave him to come out into there, because that's a nice big wide one there. I'll put him into there, turn him over. And then what I can do, I can turn him inside, once he starts rooting away, turn him inside there, and he can go into that back pot there. So I'm getting two out of this stem. Once again, press him well in, so that's, he, he's nicely in there. Now that cutting there, it'll go into that back pot, and he, it'll go into that front pot. So that's four pots here, taken up with just them two, two runners. Once again, space them out, there's another big one there. Turn them over, I'll put him in the front, and he can go around the back. It's an easy job to do, but just take your time, just there, it's working out where you want to put your plants. I mean, you can, you can put your plants, your, your pots around your around your plant on a bench if you want but I find it much easier getting them all housed into one tray and that way they don't move around and when you're watering this is this is a little bit dry uh, the, the mother plant it's a little bit dry but there uh, as I say I'll give it a good soaking once we get all the, the cuttings in that place there's another nice one there we'll just take him around there we'll put him in the front there I'll get him in the back because in there, well done, and then that part there can go into the front, that one there will go into that back one there, that one goes to that one, and I've still got that one to go into the front in there, so I've got eight plants, and there we have it, all them runners, all suited to go into their little pots, and then of course, it's an easy job, Some nice fresh water. Give the mother plant a good drink first. Don't forget, if you've done exactly what I've done, if you've got bags in, don't try and overwater. If you're taking them outside and you're putting them on your outside benches, which I will do with this, what I like to do is I like to tip the basket over, tip the basket so it's on an angle, and if it does rain heavy, it means any excess water is going to run off it. Well, that's the only time them plants now will get watered from above. The mother plants had a good drink. so you can't feed the mother plant. You don't have to give it too much potash because there's no fruit on it. You can give it a nice balanced feed. Um, grow more. Liquid grow more or something like that. Or just a handful of grow more. Water it in. And that will keep the, the mother plant fed. And of course, while the youngins are still on the mother plant, they're getting fed as well. So there we have it. That's our first one done. That's our first strawberry. We've got uh, we've got ten years to do. So no doubt I'll probably be doing one each day for the next week or two. Uh, as I say, that's a spare runner there. That'll go into that pot there. And that runner there will go into that one. So that's the eight of them filled up. So hopefully in a fortnight's time we'll have eight fantastic new cuttings to take up for us. Go all through that step by step as they get ruined. Once again, if you if you need to, you can give them a good spray with chamomile tea. That can do them any harm whatsoever. Good spray with chamomile tea. That'll keep them nice and clean, and of course it'll help them runners get stuck in there. Maybe it's tomorrow. Once that bends round, I can pin him into there, and pin that one into there, that one into there, and that's a whole eight pots filled. Easy as that. That's it. I've done it for years now, and it's the easiest we have found. If taking the runners without having to take the mother plant out of the basket. Now, once these are all rooted, and we take a pair of scissors 
we'll go all through this in a couple of videos time uh, two or three weeks down the line and what we'll do with the mother plant we'll take the mother plant out of the basket and we'll give it a nice fresh pot nice fresh compost and it'll just sit out in the back that way next year it'll be a second year plant and we'll keep our strawberries for three years uh, we'll get a bigger plant next year and hopefully we'll get a bigger crop just keep it well fed nice and clean the sprays that I use the baking soda you can use um, garlic use a garlic spray on them when there's no fruit in them keep some nice and clean stuff any of the beasties eating them and uh, as I say just keep them nice and clean keep them well fed plenty of water in the bottom of the tray and they'll grow on really strong but I'll take you all through that in the next couple of videos I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to leave it at that because uh, we're getting on a little bit late I've, uh, I've dragged on a little bit too long for this video what I want to start is the seeds uh, for the spring sowing for our calendula, uh, our primulas, for our pansies, for our um, bellus daisy but I'll start all that in the next video uh, I'm running a bit short today on time but um, I just wanted to get these strawberries out of the way because a few lads want to know how best to start taking the cuttings in. If you've got lovely strong cuttings like that hanging on your plants, now's the time to get them done. That can stop inside for a week or can go straight back out on the back bench where it was. Um, as you see, I'm getting a bit cramped inside here now, so I'd rather just put it out on the back bench. Just keep the eye on them. Sometimes I've got a chance of pulling myself out of the compost, but then again, just get your pins, just make sure your pins well in, and of course, don't forget to use a deep enough pot where you can get a good length of pin in to really pin your, your strawberry runner down into the compost so it doesn't move. Sometimes it, it can just wiggle itself loose but just go around and check them every other day just make sure the pin's well placed in. And I guarantee you within a fortnight to three weeks you'll have a fantastic young plant here grown away individually and you can go and take a pair of stairs, but we'll do all that in a couple of videos down the line. So, once again, I'm going to call it a day, as I say, I'm running a little bit short of time this week. But, uh, thanks for all the new subscribers. Great. Quite a few come online. I hope we're giving you some tips. Uh, once again, I must apologise uh, for last week's vid. Uh, Bev Riddle was one of the first ones to, to cheer up. Uh, but thanks, Bev, for the uh, for the nods, for the heads up. And, of course, what I did, I went straight back upstairs and changed the... Uh, change the video around and uh, change my settings but uh, hopefully this one will be, uh, be a little bit better but uh, I'm going to leave it for now and say get myself away down home and then next week we'll get started on the spring bedding um, lots to do lots to be lots of weeding to be done and lots of crops starting to come out so at the moment I'm hanging onions I'm hanging there uh, garlics uh, I'm boxing up taties so it's all good at the moment but uh, as I say if you can't wait for the videos, you can catch one on our Facebook page, which is uh, Jeff Warren on the Pot. Just uh, send them a friend's request and we'll get you signed up. And uh, you can keep an eye on us what we're doing through the week. Uh, as I say, I try to get online most nights and do it, commenting, and reply to a few answers and questions and whatnot. Uh, it's a great site. We're getting we're nearly a thousand members on the uh, on the Facebook site, so I'm, uh, I'm over the moon with that. But uh, as I say, if you can't wait for the videos, you can find one Facebook. But uh, I'm going to knock off now, and I'll see you all again next week when we're starting the spring bed. Okay, thanks again.